you're still watching Waze. Now, every year on January 25th, National Tourism Day is celebrated in India to raise awareness and educate people about the importance of tourism and the role it plays in India, in the Indian economy. So, ladies? The dance steps. This is, you know, because we, we talked about, we talked tourism. about tourism. tourism. Exactly. A of shows ago, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's vital to any economy. When you, um, he, or when mm -hmm. we talked about the amounts of money, even in Nigeria, mm -hmm. where we're not even, we're so, not you know, we're not harnessing that exactly. potential, we're still able to make $2.6 billion. So wow. I think that tourism, absolutely agree with this. We should have a national a tourism day God in Nigeria. Bless you. Because that will show it will us. Governize. It will show us that mm -hmm. now we're ready and we want to, you know, we know because the, the topic was the abandoned cash cow. Mm -hmm. We're ready to milk this cow and get out the cash. Oh, it's mm -hmm. true. Which already India is already, They're you know, harnessing, yeah. you know. But my, the, the, beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about India currently is that they know their culture, they know their tradition, and, and they, they are selling it. And they're selling it. And they're speaking it. Even if they find themselves in another country, they it, a little, it, yeah. yes, a little child who wasn't even born in India ah, can actually when I was speak growing up. Easy. The you wouldn't do that one. You carry your mother's uh, veil and <laughs> mat it like hair. You, you I mean, their culture you is... burning train and the oh rest. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Their culture is so rich. Totally. And they have successfully you know, sold, it sold it to, to the, the world. world. And I think that no matter where you go in the world, mm. the Indians and the Chinese, no matter where you are, you will find an Indian restaurant. Absolutely. You will find a Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. You will find Chinatown. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know how they do it, but they come in and they permit. They like we're holding on to our culture wherever we are. I think because they, they actually know how to live in clusters. You mm -hmm. know, they know how they to have a colony. Yes, yes, they just have that community there. They have the there. Indian community. They celebrate their festivals. Yes. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They so come I together. I think it's a beautiful thing, and I think our government mm -hmm. should adopt that. You know, mm -hmm. Let's we have, have a national tourism. Day Even in though we have our 250 languages. To, they can all bring different. Um, exactly, but that in itself is actually a strength. A strength. Yeah, yeah, exactly, they can politics, always bring right? it in, and at the end of the day, everybody can yeah. actually tap into the Absolutely. tourism. Sector. All right, so Isi, what did you find for us in the news? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this was coined from Vanguard. Nigeria Immigration Service actually um, rescued. 19, uh, sorry, nine girls from being um, sold into or trafficked in uh, to um, uh, Lebanon, Dubai, and others. And this was um, uh, done by the Nigerian Immigration Service in Maritola Mohammed Airport in Lagos. And take note of how they actually caught these girls. Four of them actually stated that they didn't even know what they were doing, that they were going on, a, uh, on a, a traveling trip. While the others, about three of them, stated that they were going on a, um, some sort of um, health, um, for going for treatment, actually, okay. medical tourism. So basically, the lies, this was after they have already given them serious, intensive drilling. That was when they now owned up to being, um, to going there for, Look at the keyword hustle. Uh -huh. I hate that word. <laughs> We're know, going there to hustle. Somebody actually tagged me on Instagram, sent me a video. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to share it to the group for you mm -hmm. guys, ladies to see because okay. the, the person was saying that currently they had gathered the young girls. It was a video that they are mm -hmm. here. This is the proof that, okay, they were supposed to be taken back to Nigeria, but they are holding them in an area. So she did the video without the faces, but she, exactly. was, she was zooming around, you know, mm -hmm. showing it. I think I'll, we'll, we'll look into that situation because the person was like saying they had promised they were going to bring them back to Nigeria, mm -hmm. but they are still there. They are still stuck. You know, she did the big video and tagged and, a lot of people online. And take note that these girls are being trafficked most times they are told that they are going there to work okay. Absolutely. without even knowing who they are going yeah. to meet. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, they are being um, harassed, molested, in fact, abused mm. in every ramification before being brought back That's home. Crazy. So they are already traumatized. Oh. There has been, a, there was even a documentary on BBC stating that um, African ladies that have been trafficked or sent to uh -huh. um, Middle East to work, that they are actually being abused wow. in the oh. process. That's and they crazy. don't even have a voice. Voice. Mm. That's crazy. And, and, yes. I, I remember seeing a story once on modern day slavery. 
Mm. Yes. And, you know, to hear that term still being used today. It's really, mm -hmm. really it's heart re heartbreaking. Exactly. What do you <laughs> tell us your story? So, I mean, great that today is National Tourism Day. So, so my story speaks to, to tourism. And mm -hmm. it's uh, an article by Philip Meiber, who's the executive head of the Pan-African China Bank. And he's talking about the great potential that Africa, uh, Africa's opportunity to boost growth by winning over the Chinese tourists. China is pumping out tourists. They have... Mm good economy, their um, citizens are benefiting from that, they're quite a curious people, so they're looking at where they can go um, out there in the world. So he's saying, look, Africa, you can come together and you can capitalize on it. There are only a few countries right now that sort of meet the indexes in terms of hygiene, cleanliness, all those sort of things that tourists yeah. look for. And he talks about Egypt, Morocco, uh, Kenya, Mauritius, uh, Mauritius as well. Good, yes. Exactly. So really just highlighting that, look, these guys want to come and experience your culture. And, and I think from what we've seen, Chinese are generally curious. They're so attached to their culture, but they're also quite curious. So what can we do as Africans to harness, to harness this? So so he's saying, look, countries, you can individually try to campaign. Mm -hmm. But what I really loved that he said was the fact that countries can come together as Collaborate. Region. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Collaborate. So you can have a West African experience. Absolutely. And I thought that was really um, really an interesting strategy. Yes. And if, if we're looking at what we've so talked about with the government. Let me tell you how this strategy would work. You know, I was talking to a group of friends. Um, we're having a strategy meeting. Like, you know, we call ourselves the female CEOs. And I was saying that, you see, there's no how you want to grow and expand without collaboration. Absolutely. You know, so the success of Waze is, a, is, is partnership that has worked, collaboration. Mm -hmm. So if, if our government are truly ready, you know, they would understand that, you know. You see, it's this syndrome of, I want it to be me, yeah. I want it to be yeah. me. Yeah. That is what has been killing us all this while. When, I, when, when, you, when we discuss this um, story, story, it just resonates, and it's so clear. Give us a West African experience, and people would come in in drones. They would just be coming, coming in into West Africa. So, so, you, meet, so you, you imagine somebody buying a ticket, touch down two days, exactly. Lagos, two days, a multi country Ghana, trip. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. You know, but you can't build something standing as a, as a loner. Yep. It doesn't work like that. And no. already there is um, so much, um, should I call it diversity? Because, um, what's it called? Ghana is uh -huh. actually com competing with Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria is now, competing yes. with this Absolutely. world. <laughs> so there Absolutely. is no, there's no synergy, Absolutely nothing. Not. All right, so my story is quite um, an interesting one by our Emir of Kano, <laughs> Lamido Sanusi. He says um, polygamy is um, causing poverty, backwardness in the north. Wow. Um, so he gave this, he, he, I think he went, he, 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 um, he gave this lecture or a speech while he was talking, he was explaining that a lot of people in the north, they are poor, extremely poor. And you see a poor man that cannot even take care of himself. You now get two, three wives, have so many children. So by the time they're having the children, they have multiple children, they, ca they cannot take care of those children. Most times, some cases, the men even actually divorce these women and leave the women with these many children. Many children. Yeah. So oh. you now see these children going oh. on the street. So it has increased the women are educated. Mm. You know, so it has, yeah, they are not educated. The children are not educated. It has mm. increased the number of children begging on the streets. They call them the Almajires. Mm. They've increased also the amount of crime, you know, wow. happening in the, in the north. north. So that if they are ready to move on, you know, they have to kill that, you know, it is almost so, like a menace right now in the north that men are just going about so irresponsible having a lot of children all over the place and i think it's good that from someone that is respected like and him and saying it as it is you know possibly they will start to find solutions i think we should put a law have just one chat I was, just, I was just going to ask you that <laughs> do you think what was what worked in china could work here it can. Mm. i think that we still view children as a prize and it's that thing that says uh, back in the day you had lots of children because you had a farm mm. yes. so you have to go out there and farm but we've moved away from that but mm. the culture still really puts a high price oh, it's not cultural. on having children in my home you don't you can't even go there <laughs> when they when the school fees hits you <laughs> so, so school fees is the rational side yes, of so. culture the people that are being hit by school fees <laughs> it's going to be aligned yeah they have the people that are see the children yeah. are not they're educated not going to they're school, actually with the yeah, culture they're not going to school. so they will just they keep actually don't care children. so it's they such a sad story we're going to we're going to look they into this um this um northern yeah we're going to but i just want to say kudos to yeah the aim yeah he was he was saying another article that I read that this uh, title was particularly important for him because he felt that he could do a lot in this role to Absolutely. help the plight and we are of, seeing it. and we're seeing yeah. it. All right, so 
Olufemi Beckley Moronfolu joins us after the break to discuss the business of architecture. Please stay with us.